Many years ago, my first love, to be honest, was Austrian art and culture of the early years of the 20th century. And uh, I started to study artists who are now very famous, uh, including famous in this country, uh, Klimt, uh, Kokoschka, Schiele. Um, but after a time, I started to realize that in telling the story of those artists and telling the story of that city, Vienna, I was only telling half the story because this was the period of a now vanished great empire, the Austro-Hungarian Empire. But what about the, the other half of the story? What was happening in Budapest? Who were the artists? Um, what did they create? What did their works look like? And as I say, this was many years ago, when I started looking for the answers, I realized that almost no one in Britain had studied this subject at all. Um, it became something very interesting for me, and the fact that it was hard to find the answers of, about these questions just made it more of a challenge. And of course, it wasn't exactly a hardship to, to go to Budapest, to, to acquire Hungarian friends. I, I made many friends among the the gallery owners, the dealers, the museum curators and directors, and met with extraordinary generosity because these people wanted to help me. They wanted their art to be better known. And that was really the, the starting point. And as I became convinced of the, the quality of some of this work, I really felt that I had a unique opportunity to to do something to, to make it more famous and to, to make other people see uh, the beauty and the interest of Hungarian art of this period in just the same way that I had discovered it for myself. The eight, the Hungarian eight, the group of eight, they were the first real Hungarian internationalists in the visual arts. Hungary in the years before 1900 was quite isolated from the mainstream developments um, of Western European painting. There were relatively few contacts. Um, there wasn't really a great tradition of Hungarian art. It was only really international contacts that opened up possibilities for the, the younger artists of the avant-garde who came to maturity in the years around 1900, just after 1900. And several of these painters came together initially not as an exhibiting society or a group with a manifesto. It was more like a group of friends. The central figure um, was an artist, a now famous painter in Hungary called Karoly Kernstock. Um, he was a grand seigneur, he owned an extensive country estate, he was a wealthy man, he used to invite his artist friends to come and stay with him in the Hungarian countryside. And out of those, shall we say, friendly beginnings grew this new movement. And one of the things that united these artists was that one way or another they had all contacts with Paris or they had even studied in Paris or, or lived in Paris. So they were looking constantly at the latest development of Parisian art. Um, they were aware of new discoveries like the Fauve painters who burst upon the, the Parisian art scene in 1905. They responded to Fauvism. They responded to the art of Cezanne, which was also being discovered in this period. And out of that grew this very distinctive art that was both international and yet at the same time uh, distinctively Hungarian. Um, European art with a Hungarian accent, if you like. And one of the strongest painters was uh, Robert Bereng. I regard him as the strongest painter of the group. And around the walls here, you can see beautiful drawings by Bereng, which as far as I know, are being exhibited in London at the Hungarian Cultural Center for the, for the first time. I think there is no substitute for seeing works of art in the original. Um, yes, now you can buy books and catalogues, you can go on the internet, you can download images, you will even find images of paintings by Hungarian artists just by doing a, 
a Google search on your computer, that's no substitute for the real thing, the real visual engagement with the objects themselves. And one of the beauties of this exhibition is that these are quite delicate works, these are intricate works, you can get really close to them, you can ask yourself questions like, how is this actually drawn? How is it painted? How is the work made? And look very closely in a way that is sometimes impossible in a big national museum or gallery. For me, Hungarian culture is something very special. And even before I became interested in Austrian painting and then Hungarian painting, I was passionately devoted to Hungarian music of the early 20th century. So this is going back not just years, but decades to when, when I was a student. Uh, one of my great discoveries of those years um, was the music of Bela Bartok. Uh, what I did not know then was that Bartok was a pivotal figure in this renaissance of Hungarian culture, modern Hungarian culture, if you like. He had links with the, the writers and the poets. He had links, friend, friendships united him with the visual artists as well. Beren and Bartok were, were friends. So although then I loved the music, I was fascinated by the music, I didn't know how important uh, Bartok was as a central figure within this new Hungarian avant-garde. <laughs>